Thank you, Axel. Thank you for the introduction. Thank you all for joining. Um, it's a pleasure for me to do a presentation on behalf of the OSLC Open Project Governing Board, which is co-chaired by me and Jim. Uh, today, I'll talk about three things. I'll do a brief intro for uh, the open project for the newcomers. Thank you, Eran, for a general uh, introduction to OSLC and how it helps digital engineering. Uh, this uh, part will be a bit more on the organization of the project. Next, we'll give you a status updates from last year. We had a presentation last year where we've um, outlined some future items and we'll see how those fared. And finally, we'll dedicate the rest of the conversation to the discussion of what's next for OSLC. Uh, and we hope that you will join the discussion. And just as a reminder, you can post uh, questions on the Q&A while I speak, uh, even though we'll take them uh, li later uh, after the talk. Uh, OSLC was open source by IBM uh, around 2009. And in 2013, it was contributed to OASIS for vendor neutral standardization. In 2019, uh, OASIS reached out to us and suggested to try out a new format uh, that they called Open Project that would streamline standardization uh, and allow us to open up membership to more people to lower the barrier of entry and to deliver more work products than just standards. Uh, we jumped on this opportunity as some of the first OASIS members, and we've been very happy with the transition. Um, currently, we have KDH uh, represented by me, IBM represented by Jim, and Connexus represented by Axel um, on the project governing board. Uh, the main features of the open projects uh, are that you don't have to join OASIS uh, to be a contributor, uh, though if you do, you will be able to get a, a seat on the PGB. And you also don't need to enter an, into any legal obligations when you join mailing lists or calls, you're free to join, and you will need to sign CLAs only when you start to contribute to normative content of the documents. Uh, the scope has been broadened uh, a bit to include both OASIS, uh, OSLC standards but also to provide reference implementations and other uh, materials to empower vendors and users uh, to deliver high quality uh, and compliant OSLC uh, tooling. We meet weekly, once a week, and I'll share the details uh, in the final slides. Uh, so we manage a number of specifications under the open project. Uh, the main specifications are OSLC core, which uh, defines an underlying foundation that allows that interoperability that Aaron talked about. Next, uh, we have an OSLC query specification that allows uniform query uh, of resources across OSLC servers. Uh, while remaining simpler than popular query standards such as uh, SQL or Sparkle. Uh, next is tracked resource set specification, uh, which allows you to build event-based systems uh, tracking changes to uh, OSLC resources across your whole engineering uh, tool chain. And finally, a configuration management specification that allows you to deliver a consistent set of resources. Uh, the domain specifications are the most popular domains that vendors choose to implement. Uh, they are requirements management, configuration, apology, change management, architecture management, and quality management specifications. Um, you'll find a lot of products on the market that implement one or more of domain specifications in addition to some of the core ones. Finally, we have a few specifications that are inactive. Uh, they are at the working draft status. And if someone would like to pick them up and to work on them, we'll be very happy. We have a few uh, specifications that are obsolete 
But if there is a significant uh, interest from the community, we can also uh, revive them. Now to the updates. Uh, this is a slide about the future work we had last year. Uh, we set out to deliver a candidate OASIS standard for OSLC core. Uh, we did that. Um, and furthermore, we managed to publish final OASIS standard for core, as well as for query requirements management, uh, change management, and quality management is currently a candidate for OASIS standard. And uh, pending a 60 day public review, it will become an OASIS standard in a short while as well. We set out to gain new contributors. Um, and I'm very happy to say that uh, Francois, uh, who represents Otis Willard, uh, is uh, regularly joining and contributing to the project. You will hear from his uh, colleagues uh, from Sodius Willard uh, more in this uh, OSLC Fest. We set out to provide more uh, client guidance. And the reason for that is that uh, specifications are primarily written from the perspective of server implementers, and that required some um, reverse engineering, so to speak, for implementers of clients uh, that consume OSLC resources. We're happy to announce that we've submitted five projects, uh, five project nodes for publication that uh, cover core configuration management and TRS specifications. Uh, that should help all client implementers uh, to get started quickly. Finally, we set out to deliver candidate OASIS standards for TRS, configuration management, and architecture management. Uh, this work is still in progress. We have delivered TRS and configuration management uh, approved project specification drafts for the very first time. Architecture management is a project specification that has fulfilled all the requirements to progress to the OASIS standard, but we've chosen not to do so in order to, gar uh, to gain a bit more feedback from the community. I'll talk briefly about a few main standards and what, what's been done there and what's new since last year. The first one is OSLC Core 3.0. It's a major revision of the OSLC Core standard. Uh, the, main, uh, the main point for all of you is that it does not contain any breaking changes from 2.0. Uh, if you have a standards compliant OSLC Core 2.0 server, you can simply go over the conformance uh, clauses from OSLC Core 3.0 and declare conformance uh, to the 3.0 specification without putting additional engineering resources on new feature implementation. Having said that, we do have a few features that you may find very interesting. Uh, those are OAuth 2.0 and OpenID Connect authentication mechanisms, attachment support, and improved discovery uh, for uh, simplified discovery of OSLC friends with uh, less URLs. Additionally, we have harmonized the OSLC specification with the LDP spec from W3C, and we've extracted query uh, specification into a companion spec uh, for editorial reasons. Uh, the next spec is um, configuration management. Uh, we've published uh, the first draft of it, um, and we would like to make it clear that it has no major changes compared to the working draft that you've seen for many years. Uh, the reason for, the, for lack of such changes is because we wanted to uh, have a snapshot of what has been implemented by many projects and is being relied on in the field. Um, one thing that we need to take care of before we are ready to promote configuration management to an OASIS standard is to specify change set delivery further. Finally, track resource sets. We also published the very first project specification draft under the open project. Uh, neither configuration management nor track resource set specifications have been fully finalized uh, before. So this is not a new revision, but the very first revision of those specs. And uh, we also refrain from introducing major changes here 
uh, and we've in included all the uh, lessons learned and some confusion points were addressed where servers and clients could be incompatible. We welcome your feedback on all of these specs. And now we are ready to discuss what's next for OSLC. Um, it's an open ended discussion. We, as an open project, we do listen to all our contributors and members. I've prepared uh, together with Jim a few topics. And uh, the first one is integration uh, between SysML v2 and OSLC. Um, we would like to explore a deeper uh, integration of these two standards and how they could be used uh, to build um, engineering tool chains uh, of the future for um, designing uh, cyber physical systems. Um, another topic is push notifications for TRS. TRS is a polling based standard, which is very good for caching. Uh, however, in order to increase the velocity of data in an OSLC powered system, we are interested in push notifications. Finally, we would like to explore a role of behavioral OSLC in behavioral integration further. Uh, we have automation and action specifications, um, but we would like to revisit the needs of behavioral integration today and also how the automation and action specs um, have been used uh, in the past. Uh, with that said, uh, please join us for our weekly calls. We meet at 16 o'clock Central European time or 10 a.m. Eastern. Uh, this link uh, represents a main entry point to all our work, and I'll share more links uh, after the presentation. Uh, with that, let's open for Q&A and 